so what we will be discussing today will be the things that are not to be done in laparoscopic cholecystectomy myself dr kevur but i am a gi and hpb surgeon practicing in surat as a gastro surgeon so now we all know that what is laparoscopic cholecystectomy and what does it mean by and uh, this is simply the removal of gallbladder and we all know that how it is done so what are the steps for the safe laparoscopic cholecystectomy so most important thing is the position of the patient second most important thing is the port position third is the care to be taken during the surgery fourth will be the removal of gallbladder and last but not the least will be the closure of the ports once it is done we can say that we have successfully finished the laparoscopic cholecystectomy so what to do and where to stop that is what we are going to discuss in today's our uh, video so the important thing is in any laparoscopic cholecystectomy is the position of the patient where the arm of right side is generally flexed the left arm is extended so that the iv line and access is given to the anesthetist the surgeon stands on the left side of a patient the assistant stands on the right side the camera person stands on the left of surgeon the primary monitor is there on the right shoulder the secondary monitor if the option is available then it is there on the left shoulder side of the patient and most of the time the surgery is made easy when it is done with a head up and right up position but the second important step is the port position so classical teaching says that the epigastric port should be there on the left of midline however we recommend that it should be there on right of the midline and it should be just right side of the falciform ligament classical teaching says that the umbilical port should be infra umbilical so if you want to put an infra umbilical port with the open technique or with the varies technique the generally the surgeon needs to stand on the right side he inserts the port just uh, below the umbilicus by lifting the umbilicus and then he has to change the side to come on the left side to insert the rest of the ports what we recommend is, is that if you put the port on supra umbilical region this changing of site will definitely be prevented that will save the time that will save the frustration and second and most important thing is that it does not make any difference in operative field of a laparoscopic cholecystectomy third port is anterior axillary line or you can put it in the mid clavicular line and fourth port is generally the mid axillary line or that is a retraction trocar for the assistant here the care should be taken that this all three port needs to be kept in the same line in the so what are the port size so port size could be 10 mm umbilicus it could be 3 mm or it could be 5 mm it could be 10 mm in epigastric region or it could be 3 mm depends on the clip applicator and uh, the suturing technique available with the surgeon open technique the umbilicus has to be completely lifted in order to avoid any abdominal visceral injury so where should be the retraction of a gallbladder if you are doing this then you are doing absolutely wrong the gallbladder should not be retracted medially but it should be retracted laterally towards the right shoulder this is the correct way to retract the gallbladder so this is how any gallbladder in any cholecystectomy should be retracted the fundus has to be retracted towards the right shoulder so this is the correct technique to retract the gallbladder now how to open the callus triangle there is a very nice and specific technique available in order to open the callus triangle so that one can visualize the anatomy of chd right duct cystic duct inferior surface of liver and the cystic artery so the hartman's traction or the left hand of the surgeon has to grasp the hartman's pouch and he should be trying to retract this towards the right iliac fossa so this is the callus triangle this is going towards the right shoulder this is going towards the right iliac fossa and this ultimately will lead to opening of the callus triangle where there is a cystic artery one can see as a content of the thing 
so this is how the hartman's traction should be applied and this is how the fundic traction has to be applied so one can see this is the cystic duct this is the cystic artery the inferior surface of liver and probably here will be somewhere the cbd so how to divide the cystic artery and cystic duct we all know that clip needs to be applied or a suture ligature need to be applied over the cystic duct or the artery however the modern gadgets are very fancy and very easy to use cystic artery can be easily dealt with the harmonic but we strongly condemn the use of harmonic scalper for division of cystic duct i am many a times asked the question that what are the cautery settings that generally you prefer so i would say if possible better stay away from the local made cautery because the actual current setting that is there which is displayed is not the thing which is there on the patient end so there are a lot of current setting 30 40 50 90 at times uh, the cauteries that i have also used in my old days where we need to put the settings up to 90 and still the cautery is not working so actually you don't know how much voltage it is delivering so the bottom line is the current should not go more than 30 to 35 anything more than 30 35 can lead to jumping of current and ultimately or eventually can lead to a late a thermal bile duct injury so one must not hesitate in putting an extra trocar many a times it happens that we struggle a lot during cholecystectomy especially when the anatomy is weird when the gallbladder is over distended when the patient is obese when the gallbladder is gangrenous then when there are a lot of omental adhesions so standard four ports are at times not sufficient enough for the dissection so that is the time where surgeon used to hesitate my advice is whenever you need put a extra 5 mm trocar it does not make any difference to the patient not a single patient is going to ask you that why you have kept one more trocar and neither they are going to have any cosmetic or pain related issue with the 5 mm trocar so whenever there is a need whenever there is a desire one must always go for the extra trocar this is the correct way of doing a complicated cholecystectomy so what are the care that to be taken during the surgery in order to avoid the bile duct injury so golden sentence is stay away from the bile duct you should not try and see the bile duct that is the best way to avoid the bile duct injury never try and go or never try and dissect close to the cystic duct cbd junction it is not at all desired and never ever try and do a thermal dissection near the cystic duct cbd junction never try and dissect the bile duct in cholecystectomy surgery you don't need to dissect the bile duct now how to do a posterior wall dissection so this is a very key area in certain specific situations of cholecystectomy where especially in case of a cirrhosis and especially in case of a chronic contracted thick walled small gallbladder why we need to take care in this particular kind of a patient is that bleeding from the tributaries of the middle hepatic vein can be disastrous if we try and remove the entire gallbladder especially in these two situations so in order to avoid such a disastrous complication it is always recommended that particularly in these two varieties one can always do a partial or a subtotal cholecystectomy by leaving behind the posterior wall of gallbladder one must not try and put excessive traction also because even that can lead to avulsion of liver capsule and even that also can lead to eventually a torrential bleed once the surgery is done what is to be done so more important or most important thing is that you should not close it in a blind position so never do a blind closure of a hartman pouch 
without confirmation of no residual stone in or within the Hartman's pouch. Second most important thing is that without inspection of Hartman pouch and without putting a drain, one should not be doing a subtotal cholecystectomy. Or a cautery should never be done blindly in the area of Callot's triangle without identifying the bleeder and without securing the anatomy of cystic duct and bile duct. So blind dissection, blind closure and blind cautery should be avoided in any step of cholecystectomy. So one must inspect the callus area and the ligated cystic artery and the cystic duct stump after he finishes the cholecystectomy surgery. So how to remove the specimen now? So classic teaching says that the gallbladder can be removed from the epigastric port and the umbilical port is same utilized for the visualization of the complete removal of gallbladder. Here we recommend that gallbladder should be removed in box that is a bag or the specimen retrieval bag. This will lead to almost nearly 100% prevention of wound infection. This is our experience that after we have started using the bag for the removal of the specimen that is for last 10 years now and we are yet to see any port site infection in any cholecystectomy or appendicectomy patients. So this is a very good practice to do it and this is how it should be done. So how to remove the specimen? The classic teaching says that it should be removed from the apigastric port. Now what are the difficulties that generally we face during this removal of gallbladder? That at times we have to increase the incision, we have to cut the muscle in the apigastric region that can lead to bleeding. If we inspect this issue carefully that why this is happening, I would say one line answer for this is the falciform ligament that is not allowing the easy retrieval of the gallbladder as well as the rectus muscle which, which are there in the epigastric region they lead to bleed. This problem can be simply overcome if we retrieve the gallbladder from the umbilicus where the camera port just needs to be shifted to the epigastric port. Umbilicus is the place where all the three layer of sheath meets. There is a pure and pure sheath. There is no muscle. The extension of incision is very easy. There is no muscles involved. It is the thinnest and superficial most part of abdomen and it is easy to close under vision as well. So before we close it, before we shut down our things, one must not forget to put the drain if it is needed and the port that we have extended whether we have extended or not the 10 mm umbilical port needs to be closed choice of material method of closure depends on surgeon but bottom line is we need to close the umbilical port can we combine so and so surgery or can we do so and so surgery along with the gallbladder so this is a very nice cartoon one of my colleague has made for me that this is my number today it's my number so today i will be going up and out rest all have to wait so what all need to wait the ventral hernia needs to wait the inguinal hernia needs to wait the umbilical hernia also need to wait the mesh putting any surgery bottom line needs to be waited even mesh rectopexy has to wait they cannot be combined along with the cholecystectomy because the gallbladder removal or the cholecystectomy surgery is classified as a clean contaminated surgery. It is not a clean surgery. Whereas all other surgeries like inguinal hernia, ventral, umbilical or rectopexy where you don't open any lumen. So they are classified under clean surgery. So the clean contaminated surgery should never be combined with any clean surgery. A lot of people when they are stuck, a lot of people when they are not progressing during the surgery, they think whether I should convert or not. My advice and my frank opinion is that conversion is not a crime. 
one must always take the consent of every patient of laparoscopic cholecystectomy with obliquely written SOS open cholecystectomy because that is just the method to complete the surgery one is the the surgeon is always going to do a cholecystectomy whether laparoscopy or whether open is a secondary thing so our target is to do a complete cholecystectomy so conversion should not be hesitated conversion whenever desired especially in presence of any disastrous bleeding in presence of any abnormal calat structure in presence of any abnormal biliary anatomy or in presence of any bile duct suspected injury should be done with a prompt decision more important thing is how to convert then the classical teaching says that it is generally done with a right paramedian or a midline incision we strongly recommend to do it with a right subcostal incision that generally makes the life of a surgeon or the expert person somebody who is called during the surgery very easy so what are the tips of open cholecystectomy i think we all know it very well how to do open cholecystectomy i would like to give only a single tip that putting this particular thing at the back of the patient's spine exactly at the lever of the liver will elevate the calates and hepatoduodenal ligament area that will make the dissection in open cholecystectomy a very very easy and doable so this is my recent book that is released and that is on complications in gi and hpv surgery one can visit the amazon and you can buy it over there or even you can read it over there and just log on to our amazon or you can even order on our email address thank you thank you so much this is my team where i works with my hospital this is seats hospital and research center